everybody wants a crossover, especially Audi. And that's because last year, nearly 60% of its business was crossovers. The Q7, the Q5, there's a Q3 that's being redone. The Q5 makes up most of the volume for Audi here in the States. The Q8 is only gonna add to that list. And then you also have the e-tron coming as well. That's their electric offering. So it's time we find out if this one is any good. Certainly looks good. It is a more adventurously styled Q7, basically. It's on the Q7 wheelbase. But instead of having a third row, they chop that off. You don't lose any comfort in the rear seat. In fact, this has more leg room than an X5. There's no sacrifice for style here, and that's a very good, very important thing. Audi didn't want to go out and call this their Q7 coupe. Automakers love calling things coupes that aren't coupes. You have the GLE coupe. The BMW X6 is described as a coupe. That's stupid. Just because it has a sharp roof line, a coupe it does not make. Four doors, people, four doors. Two doors is a coupe. Let's get that straight. This is a four door luxury sporty crossover. And it is definitely sporty. Three liter turbocharged V6 engine under the hood making 335 horsepower and 369 pound feet of torque. And it's solid, it is not a, it's not gonna blow you away, but it is good, it is responsive, it is engaging. This feels far sportier than a Q7 as it should. Standard, it comes with the adaptive steel suspension and I really like the way that feels good in the corners. And that allows you to adjust the ride from comfort, balance, and dynamic. And in dynamic, it is nice and stiff, minimal body roll, yet still comfortable. It's not overkill, it feels good, it feels real nice. Here, we are right now in Telluride. I started in Salt Lake City and Park City, drove around Moab, and I'm in Telluride now. So I've gone from you know high deserty stuff to I'm at 9,500 feet, there is snow everywhere. This is on winter tires, which is awesome. Anytime you had Quattro, all wheel drive and winter tires, you were in for a treat. Now here in the Q8, this is the Quattro setup that is rear biased. In just general driving, it is a 40-60 rearward split. And I believe it can send up to 75 or 85% rearward in, right, in the right situations, depending on which mode you're in, which ESC program you're in. Because if you put it in dynamic and you press ESC once, you go into ESC Sport and it lets you have a little bit of fun. We drove this on some dirt roads and we were kicking the tail out a little bit and driving it as if it were a fat rally car. And that term kind of makes sense here because I'm about to tell you something that at first you're going to go, nope, you're a fucking idiot. But I'm not. This, the design language of the Q8, harkens back to the Ur Quattro, the original Quattro Coupe, the road going rally car the awesome Audi that you can no longer afford used. They're like 200,000 to $500,000, insanity. What the hell am I talking about here? Look at the fenders. Those box flares have been transformed on this vehicle as sort of blister flares and you can see it. Look at the D pillar on this compared to the C pillar on the Quattro, on the Ur Quattro. It's the same rake, it's the same shape, it looks very similar. And then in the rear, where this has the full length tail light, there's a black panel underneath it that relates more again to the Ur Quattro. This is, there's a familial link there. If you really look at it, this is like you, like you, did, you stretch the width and the height of an Ur Quattro and you've created a Q8. This is, a Q, this is an Ur Quattro for the crossover world. It sounds stupid to say it, but it's true. This has more horsepower than that car originally did too, even though that must be a riot to drive. You're not waiting for the turbo to come on boost at 5,000 RPM like you are on this. It's not like a short wheelbase vehicle that's twitchy. This is related to that car though, and you can really see it if you see them together, which I did. Audi had them sitting side by side. You go, I see the fenders. The, I see that rear pillar. I see that black panel. I see what you are talking about, and it makes sense and it is good. I really like that design link. They've managed to make a crossover look cool, I think. Certain angles can be a bit tough. Head on, it's like, hey, hi, I'm the Audi Q8. But every other angle is pretty damn solid. And as a driver, as far as it goes, this is uphill at altitude and it's pulling nice and strongly. Audi's exhaust tones sound good. It's sharp. There's room in the back seat. 
I've sat back there on the way from the airport to the drive event. I was in the back seat of one of these and I was very comfortable. Uh, the driver had his seat back, normal position. He wasn't moved up, making a lot of room for me. I, I was great back there and I'm 6'3", I had no issues. There's headroom back there. You're not sacrificing like you would in some of those bullshit coupes that they want to call them. This feels good to be in. In the driver's seat, you have all this fancy new tech. You have the dual screen, latest MMI. It looks good, it works well. You have the latest Audi cockpit here, which is a great display that launched years ago on the TT and I think the Huracan actually, um, the Lamborghini. Uh, this works really well for a system that is touch base. It's easy to, with the haptic feedback that works, that you know where your fingers are kind of, it's responsive, it looks really crisp and sharp, and then it is smarter than older systems where you don't have to say, you know, you hit the button and tell you where you, you have to know the exact address or what you're going to where you're like, ice cream shop, to Main Street, any town USA, you could just be like, oh, uh, hey, Audi, I want some ice cream. And it'll go nearest ice cream here and it'll plan your route. It's much more intuitive and intelligent in that way. And then before you could, you could write to write something on the directions to be like, you know, you'd have to wait, do one letter, let it go. Do one letter, let it register. You can just write. You could write the letters right on top of each other actually. And it, it picks it all up much more, much smarter, much more intelligent, much more intuitive. It's just basically, it's become closer to what your smartphone is. And that's really good because we use our phones constantly on a daily basis. And smartphone UI design and the way they work is that they just work well or you don't want that smartphone. In a car, it's, it's not an afterthought, but it is secondary to a lot of other features. But here, it works well like a modern phone. And that's really good. And that means the learning curve, even though it is fancy new tech, it's not high because we all know how to use this stuff already. You can pinch to zoom or double tap. Both of them do the same thing like they would on your phone. You can do that on the map and it has the Google Maps display, so it looks good too. This drives better than a Q7, so it's almost like A6 versus A7. The A6 person likes the idea of the A7, but maybe the styling's not for them and they want the more button down car. With the A7, they're, they're a little bit more standout. They like the style, they like the sportiness of it. This is kind of the same way, but there, I think there's a greater leap between the driving dynamics of this versus the Q7. This feels sportier, especially with the base adaptive steel suspension and not the optional adaptive air suspension. That car though, if you do get that car, you get rear steer, you get a bunch of cool features to make that one even more engaging than this. But this base car, this is a low uh, content car I'm in at the moment. Um, this lower trim car definitely drives far sportier, you can tell right away, than a Q7. It's not an SQ5, those are more lively, those are more engaging and entertaining, but this doesn't have an S badge and it drives really well and it's fun to drive, but it's also comfortable when you want it to be comfortable. I can only hope for the future of this Q8 family that an SQ8 or an RSQ8 down the road is going to be amazing. Could be potentially very awesome. Imagine one of these with like the four liter twin turbo V8 stuffed under the hood that's in the Bentley and the Cayenne and, and all that other stuff. That will be a rocket ship. And the chassis is ready for it. The body styling matches it perfectly and we're ready to rock. Now, price-wise, these are as low as 60s and as high as 80. It's a flagship top-of-the-line SUV, so it's gonna be expensive. But they expect most of them to be about 70, which makes sense, that's, it's expensive. But that's, you know, what the competition costs. You want an X5, you want an X6, you want a GLE or a GLE Coupe. You know, what are you shopping against? That's what you really gotta think about to, to make it happen. I think it looks great from 95% of the angles. It drives wonderfully. It's comfortable. I logged a lot of miles on this thing. Again, Park City all the way out to Telluride, stopping in Gateway, Colorado, some of the most beautiful roads in this country at a wonderful time of year. This is a perfect vehicle for, the, for this location. I mean, if you're wealthy enough to afford a Q8, maybe you vacation in Telluride. So I'm living your life for the moment, but for me, it's just, I get to do it for a day and you get to do it for your whole life. So, you know, enjoy. Go buy your Q8 and enjoy. It has my stamp of approval, if that means anything to you. I don't, I'm not gonna end there, that was dumb. <clears throat>
Now I'm going to go snowboarding for the first time in four years. So I'm probably gonna be crying like a little bitch on the plane tomorrow when my legs are sore as shit. But it's gonna be awesome and I miss snowboarding, so I'm very excited and I'm doing it in Telluride, which is fucking great. I'm gonna get rad and gnarly and whatever else you cool kids say. Bye.